By the way, I was the first education chair to ever address the state board, and then I got invited back. So I get along well with the state board. Um, the only issue we've had is uh, double investment in real estate versus the land board. That's, that's a bit of a technicality, but, but uh, 4294 had one provision that would allow the commissioner to, I, I guess, what would be a good word? Uh, streamline uh, uh, an update of some electronic materials, you know, like 1.2. And that was just to go quickly, because right now, right now, and, and when that was pointed out that the board felt that they were being cut out, uh, great pains were taken to put legislative intent into the discussion and into the, the record, okay? So uh, I, I think that has been taken care of on 4294. The, um, what was the other, what was, I'm trying to think what else was in that. Because we were looking at electronic textbooks with 4294, and that was the main thing. Oh, that's what I was gonna say, is right now, textbook adoption cycles are like every seven or eight years. And, and I think today, you know, how, how often does knowledge double? You know, back when we were in high school, it was about every 20 years. History changes every year. Well, exactly. Yeah, because of progressive reinvention. Yeah, yeah, well, but I'm, I'm just talking about, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And even tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's true, too. Uh, in fact, that is, that, that, that is a concern. You know, do we put everything in PDF? You know, so it doesn't get adjusted. Okay, but but I know Dan Branch, who was the author of that bill, uh, met with the state board and, and the governor even chimed in on it that we're not looking to cut out the state board. Okay. And uh, I know I know the state board. Well, I know Don McElroy put up with a lot of probably very well, evil might be no, attacks. Good. People attacked. Mm. Yeah. And that was a shame. He's still on the board, and Gail Lowe, I think, is doing a good job. She is, uh, she's not as outspoken as Don. Uh, Barbara Cargill is, uh, represents us well, and Terry Leo. I mean, we've got, we've got two state board members that are probably within a four-mile radius of each other. So, uh, I, I if we can. Just to keep it moving along, the question around there at the end. You said the <clears throat> question was, are there any state functions that should be prioritized? So we yes, the chain Well, <laughs> yes, there there are those. And, and again, just like history, that, that can change every day. My, my attitude is if a private company can do it, then the state needs to get out of it. Okay? For example, uh, a lot of what I know about financial efficiency I learned from a private company, and I put the, I, I gave the, uh, I didn't put that in TEA because I thought TEA is an empire, well, an empire is kind of a good description, and that, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's, they think that they should be in charge of everything, and I thought I'd keep this outside it, so I put the comptroller on it. Well, little did I know that the comptroller would ignore my source of information, and she's trying to do it herself, so. That's one example, okay? Um, you know, I, uh, well, there are, there are other things, you know, uh, and, and I, it was, in fact, the previous comptroller said, uh, if it's in the yellow pages, the government shouldn't be doing it. Because what, in fact, it was in the, it was in the debate, what, what can the government do better than uh, private enterprise? Quite worse. Well, that's, that's it. We'll move on to another question here, and then we'll move over to Betty. Yeah, one behind. Okay, cool. You want me to hear you? You're talking about guns? Yes. Okay. Because I was thinking maybe it was beer. <laughs> okay, we've got about four more questions, so we can make them. Okay. Well, we are not in session right now. Um, the guy who's who's carried most of that, and, and lady, <coughs> Sina Hupp, 
I'm not <coughs> hurt. Okay, I'm not hurt. I know. I know that we almost had a bill for uh, <coughs> college campuses, right to carry. I mean, the deal is, uh, if you're qualified, you're qualified. Over to Betty. Um, I'd like to know, first of all, um, Excuse me. how you would evaluate Representative Strauss's role as a speaker. And then, two, I know that two years ago we lost some good conservatives out of the legislature. So we had, there was more Democrat uh, representation than previously. Well, 76, 74. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, that limits what you're able to do, period. And, you know, we don't see that happen. And I hope we have a nice landslide election. That would be nice. Uh, where we get a strong group of conservatives in the legislature. Again. But the, my, my second question, though, is um, basically how, um, you know, there was an issue with Strauss um, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Would you explain that? Because I know a lot of the Democrats were in favor of him too. Well, actually, what happened? Okay. Well, but how did you? How do you? <coughs> do you like the work that he did? And just explain the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> in, in two minutes, I could have done my twenty minutes on that. Uh, he wasn't. He wasn't brought forth by the Democrats. Okay. It wasn't. Gee, the Democrats have have, uh, have elected the speaker. That's that's not the case. Um, what the Dem what, there was a group of Democrats that said we need a new speaker and uh, whoever you come up with if, if you are with them we're with them. okay um, gee without getting into, into personalities the incumbent speaker wasn't going to win and that had nothing to do with the Democrats there were there were there were a lot, of, a lot of Republicans. All of which need many to be more removed from office. What's that? All of which need to be removed from office. Um, we kind of need to keep a few Republicans. Again, move on okay. to the next well, one, because I know that yeah. topic would go for half an hour yeah, if we, could. we got a <coughs> question. And education could go for 30 yeah. seconds. Oh, yes, well, sir. I have a quick one on playing off of what you said about if it's in the yellow pages, the, the private sector could do it better than the government. And I've observed for years now, and being in different school districts, private schools outperform with less means, but their parents pay double. And it's not fair that, I'll be real honest, when we moved back here, we asked the school teacher in this school board, if we should, district, if we should put our child in a school here in South County. And she turned to me and said, I wouldn't put my child in that school because there's no oversight. They put a principal in, they got free reign to tear out, throw away, get rid of staff, whatever they want to do, and no one oversees them. $8,000 a year to the home school is too. It's, 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 it's more than that. You make a good point in, in terms of private schools. Okay, you, you do, because they start off with, we have limited resources, okay? And public schools don't, although they'll talk about limited, limited resources. 